This is like the most silky pizzicato I've ever heard. Almost like those kind of old Enya soundtracks. That's a good instrument, in my opinion. My name is Trolls, welcome to Sampain, and welcome to yet another episode of our extreme, expansive multiverse of sounds. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at our harp ensemble, which is a part of our Grand H collection. H stands for Acoustic Grand Ensembles. It is really the idea of what would happen if we created new ensembles out of instruments that are not your typical sort of ensemble instruments. I think we tend to think of ensembles as like, violins or trumpets or flutes or whatever. But this library and the whole idea about age is really to explore other ideas, what could also be ensembles. This idea was actually born with a whole different library I did some years ago where I was reading about John Williams, how he always uses dual harps in the hall for those sort of big lush orchestral ET kind of sounds. You'll have a harp in the left and the right side. So we did that as a part of our century dual harp, which is also on its way for sound paint. But that sort of led me to a more expansive thought like, well, what would happen if we took even more harps and make them into unique ensembles? So in the case of our harp ensemble, we're gonna explore a quartet of harps. It's so beautiful and it's sort of harps on steroids, if you will. But here in the beginning, let me just try to play with the four harps, sustains, staccatos, tremolos, the sort of usual suspects. We'll go through the microphone positions as well. So you can get used to what the harps sound like in their more core sort of condition. Isn't that the prettiest sound in the world? It's a beautiful, lush sound. It has a little bit of a chorusy kind of effect to it, which is sort of what happens when you put four instruments, especially something that's already a little bit facey like a harp. Let me also try the different microphone positions here. We were listening to the decatry, but we also have a close and a wide microphone. This is the close. So pretty. Let me compare that to the wide microphone here as well. This is the beautiful modern hall of Slin in Europe. It's one of my favorite halls because it's long, big, and it gives that lush kind of sound. Every time we record at Slin, we always take the chairs out of the hall to create an even larger reverb. So the natural decay of the hall is like 3.5 seconds. So when we're using the wide and fire microphones here, we're really back in the hall. You can hear the beautiful stereo width of the sound. And to me, there's a particular way of playing harps. It's all in these sort of strum-like fashions. So even though the keyboard is not a harp, it's easier to play harp-like styles than it is to do, for example, a guitar, which is just not the same design. But if you play a little more in these sort of strum-like fashions, instead of more piano, you get more of that sort of harpy kind of feeling, if that's a word, harpy.
I just love the way it rings out in the hall. It makes me think, like just as an experiment, let me turn the decker on again together with the white here. But I've never done this before. Let's just try to explore it together. I'm gonna take the white microphones and put them on reverse. Let's see what happens. Really? That was actually not what I expected. Let me try again. It's a little, I wish it was longer. So I'm going to take um, this guy here on the time module and slow down part three here. So the reverse get even longer. Let's see what happens now. Maybe let's add a rain delay just to go completely crazy on this as well. Here they come. That's cool. I've never heard that before. Um, let me just try on the higher notes here. Let me um, speed up the time maybe a little bit here so they're not that late. Uh, let me just play on the higher notes here. What a cool sort of ambient, weird sound design kind of sound. So pretty. Should we add a shimmer reverb to that just to go completely in like heaven and just shower the sound with sweet positive waves? I'm gonna take the tone up and turn out a little bit on the shimmer reverb here just to give it a little more sort of non-metallic vibe. For me, the whole idea about sound paint is that sort of idea of making collages, Jackson Pollocks of sound waves just splatter, but really explore in different ways and let the engine speak back to me. Like this is a dialogue I'm having. I don't really know what's gonna happen, but that's sort of the fun of it and a beautiful way of exploring new sort of sonic territory. Let's try some other programs here. If you look in the browser here, you'll notice that we have an enormous amount of programs and we have an equal enormous part of parts here parts. I always think of parts slash the P off and you got arts for articulations. These are particulations. You'll notice how many there are in here. This is a deep library, three microphones, but a really, really extensive set of microphone positions as well. Another one of the core articulations is our staccato notes. You know, you can pluck the harp in a short fashion, then mute it. We both have tight, loose and soft kind of staccatos. So let me show that just beginning here with the tight staccatos. <laughs> You can hear the sound is short and very tight. We also had the harp ensemble play more loosely because you can sort of strum and because we have four players, I thought it was cool to have an articulation that where everything was a little more imprecise. So you have the tight staccato we just played, but also this sort of more loose sort of strummy kind of vibe. You can hear they're not always precise. There's a little bit of sort of looseness going on just to have it in there so you can play with it. Those bass strings, super nice. One of the prettiest things you can do on harps is to play harmonics on them. They're kind of unique because you have to find them at a sort of a horizontal level on the harp, but they're really beautiful when you find them. Think of that of a nylon guitar, but just much bigger, much richer. Is 
Isn't that the sweetest thing? This is like the most silky pizzicato I've ever heard. Almost like those kind of old Enya soundtracks. I can tell you right now, I have a feeling this is gonna be a long video. Sometimes, for me at least, sounds inform me about where I wanna go with the composition. And this sound here, for me, really, really takes me somewhere. It's so rich in the basses. It's soft, it's not at all intruding on the ear. The mid-range here, more, a little more piercing, but still soft and silky. Maybe piercing is not the right word. The mid-range here is a little more Wohltemperierte, well-tempered. But up here, we get this sort of melodic range. And for me, I just say that because it constitutes that of a beautiful instrument, in my opinion, that it's so rich across all the registers. Beautiful for chords, beautiful for basses, but also up here in the melodic range. That's a good instrument, in my opinion. Here's the Shoegazer by Semrad. I deliberately don't play these programs before I play them in these videos because I want to share my sort of impression of them just with you live. Yeah, if you notice here, we got the micro pitch on the master part of the program rolling here. So there's definitely movement in the sound. Not at all what I would expect from a harp ensemble. Really? Distortion on a beautiful quadruple harp here? Yeah, he's not shy about it either. There's two different ones here. Wow. Very, very sort of soundtracky kind of vibe. I dig it. Slightly warbled. Warbled. Very sort of vintage kind of VHS kind of vibe. <laughs> you know, it's funny, there's certain things you can play where you're just like, that's not what the instrument is telling me that it wants, you know? That was like, no, let's not go there. So I got to explore this VHS vibe in a different way. something like kind of slow about the way it moves.
don't know. It's warbled. Sneaky harmonics. How beautiful. It almost becomes a little bit like a Wurlitzer, sort of old school with some tremolo or chorus on it. When you move the modulo up here. Almost like organ. Mellotron maybe? It, it doesn't sound like it's plucked. It almost sounds like it's running like sustained through tape or something. And that you have like a rotator, you know, one of those Leslie speakers from a Hammond organ. I don't know. These are sneaky harmonics. Totally sneaky harmonics. Staccato haunted. Okay, if it's haunted, let's just play something haunted to begin with then. We get this beautiful quadruple harp ensemble in an expensive orchestral hall, only to like mess it up and do haunty stuff. Yep. But on the flip side of that, we can also do the most beautiful thing you can do with four harps, and that's to have them play tremolos together, just like a rain shower of notes. Just a pretty sound. You hear those release triggers? How it's just ringing out in the hole. That is so beautiful. Let's just uh, trigger them all again. Just to appreciate like the release trigger itself. I don't know, it's crazy stuff. That's the hole. The hole becomes an instrument. It generates harmonics, it generates overtones, it starts singing additional notes into the ensemble. So that's the beautiful thing about recording in halls. I see the best halls as instruments and some of the most beautiful ones as well. I mean, the beautiful lushness that it generates underneath as well. So pretty. These things for me are almost endlessly, infinitely ethereal, beautiful. Like it never stops with this sort of golden shower. I, I've always thought about these as like golden, showers of gold, if you will, just sprinkling down on a beautiful warm summer day, like the most pretty thing in the world. And while we're in that sort of ambient realm, let me also play you some of the programs by Nicolas Stackhouse, these beautiful ambient programs that are really approaching the harp ensemble in its more soft, sort of ethereal kind of state.
it's a form of sonic electricity. What the? Wow. Okay. So this is a crazy program. We're having morph going on between four different parts and just playing audio kind of effects. If you look in the parts director here, you'll notice that there's a lot of unconventional particulations in the library here. But this one, this is some of the wildest stuff I think I've ever seen. Not even that chunky in the matrix, but definitely chunky in terms of the morph. Wow. So you can hear the harpies sort of gliding in their strings without generating too many tones. This is of a non-tonal kind of sliding effect on the harp. Let's wipe off all the makeup from the effects and just listen to it in its raw state because even that's wild. Down here. This is sound paint. This is totally what sound paint is. It's just to explore crazy things we've never seen before. Four different harps gliding, morphing into each other like, yeah, hell yeah. This is another sort of crazy sound paint thing. All right, let's take all three microphones here and really add a lot of effects. I just stripped them here. Listen to these beautiful asynchronous kind of rolls. All the players doing glissandos at different rhythms and at their own sort of aleatoric pace. Is so sweet. These are excellent programs. When I hear the sound here, this is just my imagination, I'm hearing the players like blow whistle on the string, like whew. Almost like a sort of wind chimey harp. I don't know why, I just hear a little bit of sort of, sort of air sound.
it's funny playing it because I can't really describe how it feels. Because we have all these velocities and all the technology in sound paint, I feel almost like I'm playing a harp right now. Clearly not, I'm playing a keyboard. But I get a little bit of that sort of harpy feeling. That's why you'll see me remove my fingers like in very quick notion. I don't know why, but it feels right with the programs. I don't know if there's any wisdom to be garnered from that. Next up, it's ARP time. Now, when you have an array of four orchestral harps, they gotta do some glissando work as well. There's multiple parts in the library that has a variety of different roles and glissandos, but let me just show you some of the major runs here. In the bottom here, they'll be going down their glissandos, and as I venture up in the octaves here, they go in the opposite direction. That's so cute. And that's what happens when you have four players. There was a player that was a little bit later there. That's so cute. Let me take this sound here and just try to use um, time on it. I'm very curious to explore what's deep inside of it. I'm gonna take one note stretch. So now we only have the sound here sped super, super slow in speed here. But we're not done. The basses are just starting to get there now. We probably don't want to listen to an hour for the basses to climb up here, but you know, sound pain, just splash. Now, for those of you who are familiar with legato samples, I actually got the idea way back to try to legato sample harps. They have tuning pegs in the top that you can do it with. It doesn't sound that great. And you're gonna hear why right now. It gets sort of a metallic vibe, but super good for effects. These are bending notes. Now, there's a couple of articulations in the orchestral world that the players generally don't like. For example, when you do bar talk for string instruments, particular violins, players are very sensitive to it because you're plugging the strings. The sort of variation of that is to ask harpists to slap the body of their harps. For any of you guys who are harpists, most likely your harp already has a personal name that you like to call it. So you don't just slap someone you love, right? Now, when you have an array of ensemble instruments, particularly unusual ones, I did the same thing with 66 trombones and 66 tubas and 66 cellos and so forth. You want to experiment with them. In this case here, because glissandos are so beautiful and in such a sort of status trademark of the harp, I was like, try to do like glissando waves where you all sort of create new kind of shapes just going in glissandos here. So the players are really going at it here in different paces and yet all together. It's 
so beautiful. And on the opposite spectrum of that, we have rapid passandos as well, really fast sort of action kind of motions on the harp. <laughs> Someone's like grinding here, this one here, this minor one. That's sort of the John Williams sound when you really have that lush kind of sound. Imagine this in a typical orchestration, horns and violins going, and then this thing here. Now, before we wrap it up, let me just play one more time here with the pretty harmonics. This is my favorite program in the library. 